Shalom, covering mine, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and as it's very obvious right now, the Baltimore Sun reporting Israel says its uh, airstrikes took out half of Syria's air defenses. With this type of escalation of tensions between Israel, Syria, and even Iran right now, it is very obvious that the information that we were sharing with you about the Prime Minister actually resigning on Monday will probably definitely not happen. Uh, you know, there were several, though, that were saying that we had no sources on it, that we were only making this up. And so I thought maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and say who the source was, because after all, the source never said anything about not saying who they were. As you all know, we actually covered just recently the meeting there, the, the Trump rally, where Roger Stone was actually the keynote speaker. And of course, the following day, there was a luncheon held. There were uh, ministers' uh, presence as well as Israelis that were there, uh, Jewish uh, sponsors as well of uh, President Trump. And Roger Stone made the comment at that particular luncheon there. Everybody that was there heard what was said that the that Prime Minister Netanyahu would actually resign on Monday. But as we know, things can change easily. And if it had not been for the fact that Roger Stone said it, I would have never brought it out in the first place. And so the thing is, friends, what you have to understand is things are always changing. And everything is, no, nothing is ever certain when it comes to politics. And of course, we have those that are accusing the prime minister of escalating tensions with Syria in order to keep from resigning. But I'm sure if Roger Stone knew about this, there were definitely things going on in the background of his resignation. But war always changes it all. Presidents have many times have let war deflect controversy back at home, as Clinton did, using airstrikes uh, to take all the attention away from him with the allegations of sexual misconduct that he was doing. That seems to happen everywhere you go. So for us, it's not trying to prophesy or to bring about false news. As my wife said, it would have been better to put a question mark or put it in quotations. Now, she's right. She's got a lot more wisdom than I do when it comes to things like that. But the thing is, it is a major issue that is happening right now on the border with Syria. As we see here in this uh, video that was sent to us by Lorenzo on alreadyhappened.com, showing in Israel right now a huge convoy of missile, Patriot missile systems and other types of military equipment headed to the border there with Syria. Israel is preparing for war. And it seems like the prime minister knows that full well himself. And as we said in our second follow-up video, it would be a disaster for the prime minister to step aside with this type of tensions going on in Syria or in Israel on the border with Syria. It would be a major disaster. Now, there are those that are saying that on the uh, other side of the aisle in the Knesset that the prime minister has actually incited this violence with Syria in order to uh, prevent uh, the allegations that are coming against him, the indictment, etc. Well, that's all depends on who you say or who you ask or who you're looking at. Again, politics is always changing, never anything certain in politics. But then I saw this article came out here, when red lines are crossed in Syria, expect Israel to be shaken. This is coming out from a uh, man, Elijah uh, J. Magnier, uh, an Arabic site here, showing here that, that uh, are speaking here about how that Syria will retaliate for any more attacks on its soil. It says decision makers in Damascus said Syria and its allies have decided to move more harshly against Israel. Replicating Hezbollah's strategy in those days, the 90s before the Israeli uh, withdrawal from Lebanon for every violation of Lebanese airspace over the capital of Beirut, Hezbollah would fire heavy artillery above the Israeli villages along the Lebanese-Syrian border. The Syrian command and its allies have decided to impose a new rule of engagement on Israel. For every violation of Syria's airspace, Damascus will fire dozens of missiles above the Israeli inhabited areas along the Golan Heights. The intention is not to hit a specific target, 
but to make sure no Israeli on the borders are within range of the fired missiles will live in peace. They will be in the shelter, and this will happen every time the Israeli Air Force violates Syrian sovereignty, according to the well-informed sources. It is definitely gearing up, and it's not going to look pretty. Uh, the question is, is what will Israel do now? And will Syria retaliate for all of their missile defense systems being taken out, or half of them, as it was reported uh, on this other article that we were just sharing with you, uh, will Iran try to retaliate or will everything lay quiet? Nonetheless, the prime minister is not taking chances with any of it. As we see by this video right here, all this being moved up to the front line there to prepare for a possible confrontation with Syria or Iran or even Hezbollah to the north. And no matter how many Patriot batteries we put there, no doubt it'll stop a lot of them. But if you're firing dozens and they begin to come from different directions, it will definitely put Israelis at risk. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.